Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Friday Internet Marketing with me. I'm Sage. Hey, what's up, everybody? It is fantastic to see you. Fantastic. Um, I think I classify this as a great week. It was a great week. Um, there was a point at which this week that I wasn't sure I was actually going to be able to like physically get through the week just simply because I was exhausted. But that was on Wednesday night, but then by Thursday night, I was back up, and now I'm, I'm rocking and rolling. Like, uh, we just had this event, um, Digital Akron, and it was by far the best Digital Akron event we have ever had, ever. And I owe it all to the Akron Canton Airport. They made it awesome. Um, the Akron Canton Airport, if you are in Ohio, is the greatest airport in Ohio, and um, I'm pretty sure the greatest airport I've maybe ever been in. I mean, it 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 has it has um, what does it have? It has it, it has love. You know, that's what it has. That's what the Akron Canton Airport has is love, and. Um, you don't run into that very often in an airport. <laughs> Love. <laughs> um, hold on. Let me see here. Let me see if I can get back camera three. There we go. Is that me? Oh, that looks all frozen up. Hold on. Let me just do it that way. All right. There you go. Um, they are just awesome people, the Akron Canton Airport. They are um, sincerely great. That's, that's their thing. They're just, they're great. And um, uh, it, it, it shows they truly care about the community, about their customers, about their airlines. They care about everything. And, um, and, and you can feel it. And so they came to our Digital Akron event uh, yesterday. It's a, it's a round table event. So there's not like a presentation, right? We don't, we're, not, we're not presentation kinds of people. It's, it's more of a discussion. You know, I, I stole the idea from social media. That's, you know, that's where I got the idea of discussions. You know, we have lived in a world of one-way communication, of being told to you know, this is what we should think and, and this is what's important. And social media has pretty much said, no, no, that's not how it is at all. Um, it, you know, we together decide what is important. And um, so that's what the Digital Akron event is based on. Like, you know, there is a, there is a topic or a, a main a person, but it is not all about them. It is about the community and the community sharing and and that's and and the the Akron Canton Airport is perfect for that because they are very sherry they are super sherry people and um and so they were it was super great to have them here they were um you know as open as they ever are and 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 people walked away loving the event um, and so I am indebted to them for coming. Um, the, the digital Akron thing is, is a new thing started uh, by myself and um, Kevin Lockett, uh, uh, another great social media expert. Uh, he lives here in Ohio, and uh, so we came together on that. And and so we're you know we're just trying to get it off the ground. Uh, trying to build awareness and that sort of thing, and, and having a big name like the Akron Canton Airport come to our event is super, super duper helpful. And so that is kind of where my mind is right at the moment, um, and, and talking a little bit about the Akron Canton Airport and how it, um, you know, wh what you can learn from that. So, so here, for example, I want to show you, if I type in Akron Canton airport okay you will um, see you know you'll see a, a typical result here uh, let me get rid of my face okay so so here you can see there's an ad on the top um, that's not them that that's uh, cheapflights.com but then you can see here their main listing um, it 
also ties in their, their local listing, which is, shows their address. You can see that it shows in you know, 29 Google reviews there. And then you can also see uh, site links uh, th that uh, you know, are fairly standard. But what I want to show you is when you come down here, you will now start to see, um, was it a live stream event? It was not. I am so sorry. Um, oh, you can't pick me up. What? Is anybody having trouble? Let's see. It looks like it's running. Are you there? Okay, it looks, um, it looks to me like somebody's hearing me. Um, if you cannot hear me, please let me know. If you, let me write this down. If you can't hear me, please let me know. Okay, so um, I'll keep an eye on that. Uh, but I did not live stream the event. Um, I, I should have, but I didn't have the right equipment set up. I'm, I'm having a difficulty trying to figure out how to live stream the digital Akron events because it, it's the sound issue that I'm having. I don't, I like, I, um, I, I want you to be able to hear, uh, I had to press the sideways triangle button in the lower left of the video screen. Weird, very weird, huh? Well, it sounds like maybe you got it. Um, Okay, if you still can't hear me, please let me know. But uh, so, so I, uh, because it's so such a conversation, trying to get everybody to um, be heard in the live stream event is kind of a big challenge for me. So I did not live stream it. I'm very sorry um, it was brought up, but I just didn't have an easy solution or even a difficult solution. I had no solution for it, and so I didn't do it. But, but fear not. I will, I'm going to recap briefly what we talked about here. Um, so what I want to show you here is what you can see in these results when, you when I type in Akron Canton Airport are th is the Akron Canton Airport Google Plus page, okay? So that is important because you should anticipate that Google Plus listings will start appearing in more and more search results in Google, all right? So um, this is something that they, uh, they wrote this post here on uh, February 21st. It says, hop on over to Frontier Airlines, leap year sale. Oh, is it, what? Is it a leap year? <laughs> oh, that's cool. I didn't know it was a leap year. See there, look, I can, uh, you can't see or hear me. Can anybody else hear me? Um, let me know. Uh, so hold on one second here. Um, can anyone hear me? I mean, let me know. Uh, I can hear you and see you. Oh, Good, good, good. Okay, <laughs> good. I'm sorry. My, um, it looks like I'm, when that happens, maybe you might try closing the window and opening the window again on your computer. Sometimes that um, might help the issue. But it does look to me like I'm broadcasting okay. Um, I'm coming to you, incidentally, on my new internet connection, which hopefully should be much faster than my previous internet connection. Uh, so I'm very excited about that. Uh, that was a, a big problem that I've had in the past that, that this did not stream well and it was just because I had poor internet connection but now I have a fancier new internet connection. Um, so at any rate, the point here is you should anticipate more social listings in Google. And so what I would encourage you to do is to go to Google Plus. It's plus.google.com. Let me come over here. Okay, hold on. Ugh, hold on one second. Um, you, and you, you can get an account here. I would recommend that you do indeed get an account. All right. Um, and what you will find here is that over by your name, you can add pages. Do you see this little triangle-y thing? Um, so it, with this, tri the, you know, this downward triangle thing, you can manage your pages and you can add pages, okay? So you can see here, um, I think this is the standard URL. I will put it in the search box. Okay, there you go. So um, 
the uh, you know, in the chat window there, you can create a page here and I would create a page for all your stuff. So like it's quite easy. So here, um, like, let's see, um, local business or place, um, a, a, a product or brand, company, institution or organizations. Okay, nonprofits would go in there, arts and entertainment, and then other. Like if your doesn't fit in anywhere, put it there. But I'm going to set one up for uh, Digital Akron because I don't have one. Okay, so Digital Akron. It's very easy. You don't have to put in a website, but if you have one, put it in there. DigitalAkron.com. Okay, and you set up, um, let's see, what do I want? This will be a um maybe a uh, non-profit it's not really a non-professional services political organization company institution organization that's what it's going to be this page will be publicly visible its content is appropriate for any google plus user yes 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 and i agree um and i press create and you can see here it is that easy to get started very easy okay and um, 10 words to describe your page best. So, um, Digital Akron is Akron's Center for Digital Stuff. Duh. I don't know, is that too snarky? Too snarky, right? Funny, but too snarky. Um, I'll just go with, I'll remove the duh. Is Akron's, um, nah, it's not a center. Okay, is Akron is, um, okay, that's not good. So um, Digital Akron is all about helping Akron be um, a leader in digital communication. That's better right okay and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a little photo I'm gonna come over here I like this um, I'm gonna save this image it's like a little um, an old-timey blimp image okay I'm gonna download that I'll call it blimp okay and I will come over here and I will um, change my profile photo select a photo from my computer all right, we'll go to downloads. So they are trying to make it as super duper easy as they possibly can, okay? So let's see here. We'll make it a little bit bigger like that. That's good. Um, set as profile photo, okay? So there it is, and then I can click continue. And um, let's see, this post will will come from you not from this page but then so I can share it I'm not going to share it just yet um, or wait let's see so hey I just added a digital Akron page on Google Plus there okay and so I can share that there you go all right and then I'll click finish and so now you can, now I have this page. And it's really that simple. That's really what I want you to do is just to have this here. Um, and because it is, uh, you are going to find that more and more people are, you're going to see these, these results appear in, in search results more. So, um, you know, that's, it, it is, it is worthwhile um, doing this, okay? So, um, so yeah. So that's that's is that's how you do it. It's very easy. Please do it. It only takes a minute, and then you have it there, and then you can see. I can come back here, and I can manage my pages, and um, you know, and I can add things and grow things. I can add um, managers and and so on, you know. So like, for example, I think I would want to add Kevin Lockett uh, to this page. So let's see here, managers. I can click managers and um, let me see if I can find him. OK, 
Kevin Lockett. Um, uh, I don't know what his Gmail is. All right, I can't do it right now. But, you know, I just put in his email address and I could, can add him. Uh, so, you know, it, so then multiple people can add, uh, you know, to the site. Um, ah, it doesn't pop up anybody. I have to go find the email address. I don't want to do that right now to bore you to tears. So, but, but you can do all that kind of thing. Um, so the question is, if a small business were to set up a Google Plus page, would you put up the same content as what goes on your website and or Facebook page? Okay, great question. So um, you certainly could. You certainly could set up the same content. Um, uh, that would be the easiest, and it's not a terrible approach because what you might find is that people might follow you on Google Plus um, as opposed to Facebook or Twitter. So you could certainly repurpose content. Um, however, there is a benefit to creating mildly different content or, or, or taking the same content and presenting it in a different way um, in different um, landscapes, okay? So um, what you should know is that digital, or I'm sorry, Google Plus is more um, male-oriented and tech-oriented right now. There are more men, males I should say, on Google Plus than, than females, and they tend to be a little bit more techy. Okay, so to that point, when you come to the Akron Canton Airport Google Plus page, you will find that they are, um, this is what they're saying here. We're building CAK's Google Plus page around the tech savvy customer. We think you'll like the fit. All right, so they have taken this content um, uh, this this area and are talking to a more tech savvy person and without saying it it's probably a little bit more maybe male focused okay I don't they, they haven't committed to saying that I don't know I'm, I'm assuming that I haven't heard that but I'm, I'm imagining maybe that would be the case um, and you can see here like look so you can see Mark Mc, McConnell here has shared that um, he, she, yeah, they have a picture of two men right there. Um, so let's see here. Uh, Christy Van Auken, the CMO, she, she wrote there. Um, the, the year business travel bounced back. So you can see they're kind of going business traveling here. Boeing, design your own Dreamliner. You can just see here that it's um, as opposed to, like let me come over to their Facebook page, for example. And let me show you the difference. Hold on here. We will now you're looking at a beautiful blank screen. Awesome. Let me come back to a, a picture of me. With, uh, me. I'm tired of looking at my uh, my 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 fuzzy head. I don't know. I'm thinking about shaving it all off. That's what I'm that's what I'm trying to say. Okay. Um so let's see. So um Akron Canton Airport. So what they showed us last night was that this content, this audience skews more female. And so you can kind of see, look at the pictures difference. So here they're talking about their Valentine's promotion that they had. And you can see it's more family or, or, um, um, focused. It is talking about, you know, it's just talking more about that. Um, you can see the people that write here, um, Amy Smith, Kelly and Henderson, um, why Stark, uh, you know, you can, I mean, there's definitely men on here for sure, but Karen Hire Hamilton, Lisa uh, Mail Berger, so uh, Evelyn Cornbloom. Uh, so you can see all of these people, they tend to skew a little bit more female. And so the messaging is a little bit more female oriented here and I should say I think more consumer focused more consumer travel um, um, casual travel or enter what do they I forget what they called it like like just cat you know the, the a, a, a non-business traveler um, focus probably whereas they're they're catering a little bit more to that angle over here at 
um, Google Plus. And so, so they are um, changing the message a little bit here. You don't have to, but for example, right now we are in the process of building um, a social campaign for uh, targeting manufacturers, okay? There's a group of people that aren't um, prolific online. If I, you know, I hope that doesn't offend the manufacturers in the crowd, but you, you know, they're just, not, they're not, they're not, you know, it's not easy to find, um, uh, you know, manufacturers in the social media space. To that point, we are probably going to be talking more to them in um, Twitter and LinkedIn because we do feel that that's probably where they will uh, reside, you know. So um, that's just something, you know, to consider. So how would you go about increasing fans to your Google Plus page? All right. So the number one way of increasing fans and followers and likers, <laughs> likers, to anything is to use the content and to engage other people in um, the space, okay? So what you can do here is you can come over here and I can come to Sage Rock and I am pretty sure I can come in here and I can come over to this right hand side um, and I think I can say use Google Plus as Sage Rock. I think. Let's see, manage or settings. Let's try settings. Let's see. Um, if anybody knows that if I can or can't, let me know. I, I thought that was... <laughs> These things are always changing. It drives me nuts. Drives me nuts. Um, so you um, view profile as now. All right. So I thought for sure that you could do that. I, I, I know for a fact that you can share your page, okay? So you can come in here and, and share the page, which, you know, you can talk about the page and that sort of thing. And I'm fairly confident that you can use Google Plus. Hold on, let me write this down. Use Google Plus as a page. Let me see if that um, yields any results. Uh, let's see. Google Plus Pages. Let me see if I can find this here. I'll give you the link to this page. It tells a lot about Google Plus here. So um, share. Different people are interested in different parts of your business, whether it's bringing news and um, right on, you know, that kind of thing. Promote, get the word, put the plus one button anywhere you'd like people to be able to recommend your business, measure um, uh, how your page is doing. Uh, you know, maybe I, I thought for sure that you could do that, but maybe you can't anymore. Um, I just don't know. I'm sorry. I, 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 just, I just totally kind of... Uh, cannot remember how you I, I I thought for sure that you could do that but I can't see it and maybe you can't anymore I don't know um, but at any rate that is uh, you know engage having people ha using putting content on your page that is useful and interesting is the best way of growing this stuff using the medium is the secret okay um, okay, so it says, does having a Google Plus page for your business help it come up higher in the search results? I remember you saying more Google uh, the more Google properties you use, the higher you will rank. So I, I wouldn't necessarily say that you would rank higher, but let me show you something. If I go to Google and I type in Cleveland Airport, you'll see here that you have the Cleveland Airport, which is a direct competitor of the Akron Canton Airport. But if you come down here, what you will see is a result for the Akron Canton Airport Google Plus page. And so what's happening here is that 
by talking about Cleveland in Google Plus, their Google, their Google Plus result is showing in the search results for Cleveland Airport. And so that is a pretty powerful thing. So I, you should anticipate seeing more search results having Google Plus listings. So um, you know, I can't guarantee that it's going to make you rank higher, but I do think that Google very well is definitely looking at this content and trying to see if, if it would fit in their search results. So I, you know, I do believe that, that social um, results, especially for Google and Google Plus, are important. And so even if you're not into social for social purposes, you um, probably should be considering it for search purposes, for sure. Okay? So I, you know, I just think that that is something that's very interesting to um, consider. The last thing that I thought was super awesome about last night, um, so, um, oh, and you can see here, Kelly Henderson wrote, had a great time at the Digital Akron meeting yesterday. Um, great information from Christy, Ryan, and Kim. And then Akron Canton Airport right, wrote right back and said, it was a blast, Kelly. Glad we got to meet you too. We'll see you soon at another event or maybe the Digital Akron again. So you can see you know, that, that they are very engaged with people here you know, and commenting and, and, and that sort of thing. Um, so that is, a, you know, that is very powerful. But what you should know, one of the things they told us that was very, very interesting was that they, the way they, got, they get new um, likers, as it were, on Facebook is through contests, but they said that the contests have changed. They currently have about 33,979 likes. And what they said was that they used to have a lot of luck with big contests. So like, you know, big trip giveaways and that sort of thing. But they said that those don't work great anymore. And they believe that it's because people don't believe they can win those. What they are having a tremendous amount of luck right now is T-Shirt Tuesdays. So on T-Shirt Tuesdays, you can come to the Akron Canton Airport and you can like them, okay? And they give away 10 T-Shirts every Tuesday, T-Shirt Tuesday 2.0, all right? So you come in here, you can enter their sweepstakes. So enter sweepstakes, see there, I will click that. Okay. Um, and they're getting a ton. I think they said a thousand sweepstakes entries a week for this. And their belief is it's because people believe they can win. People think they can win a t-shirt. They don't think they can win a free trip to New York. And so that is, I think, a pretty interesting thing to consider, that contests are a very powerful way of um, entering, of, of, of getting new people. Um, but, uh, so you gotta put in your address here. Okay, hold on, let's see. Akron, Ohio, 44305. I think I want a large. Okay. And there's my email. And please add me to your newsletter for sure. So that you can see there that they're, they're setting it up to add you to their newsletter as well. And then let's see, my birthday, 1971. I have a red. Sure, I have. I've agreed to all that. I'll agree to whatever. And then I can share it on my wall, which also promotes it. So now, not only have they gotten my, they got my email, my um, mailing address, um, I am added to their newsletter, and I have now also shared this on my wall, okay? And I can invite people, okay? Um, I can publish this to my wall here, all right? So they have done a tremendous thing here in getting 
the the viralness of this to spread um, and so I can just share this here um, who doesn't want a free t-shirt okay share all right and so now that's on my wall as well so this is something to consider that you could very well run contests and promotions on your Facebook page, but they don't have to be amazing prizes. In fact, amazing prizes might actually backfire. Um, and so Facebook contests, um, oh, it's a wildfire. Okay, wildfire, wildfire app. You cannot run a contest uh, straight on Facebook. You must use a third-party tool, and probably the industry standard for this is wildfire, all right? So they will help you set this whole thing up and um, get it running and everything like that. And so, um, you know, this is a good way of running a, a contest for sure. So give, you know, this might be something to try, but, you know, I'm here to tell you this is what the... Akron Canton Airport does and it absolutely positively works. <laughs> so those were the things that I felt really jumped out at me last night. They were really very cool and powerful um, and I will try to videotape these things. Um, the next group, I'm trying to get the um, Akron Children's Hospital to speak at the next event uh, because they do a lot of really cool online video stuff and it would only make sense to, you know, videotape the video session of Digital Akron. <laughs> so that is that. All right, everybody, let's move into the news. Let's see what is going on in the world of, you know, interwebs. Let's see, let's see here. Let me close some windows. All right, come in here. Okay. I'm going to my starred items. Okay. Oh, check this out, will ya? 38 million people, 38 million Americans, not just people somewhere on planet Earth, Americans, America, <laughs> U.S. citizens, visit social networks on mobile devices, okay, on their phone nearly daily. Does that blow your mind or what? Nearly daily. But that number isn't even the big number. It says, are you reading the story on your phone via a link on Twitter? I, I was actually last night. A new study by research firm Comcore says that 64.2 million U.S. citizens use their mobile devices for social networking, with more than half of them doing so almost every day. A full 38.2 million people use social networks on their phones or tablets on a nearly daily basis. According to the report, what exactly are they doing? Well, let me tell you, they're reading updates from their friends, says the study, with 84.6 of mobile social networkers checking out posts from people known personally. Posting status updates with the second most popular activity. 73% use users partaking. It's important to note Comscore counts leading blogs as social networking, like Mashable here. While the study found users are most likely to read posts from friends, it also says people are increasingly using social networks to interact with brands and organizations. Almost 58% of users, U.S. users, read posts from companies or brands. About 32% are said to, do, to be likely to click on ads while social, social networking. This is huge, people. The overall number of people experiencing social networks through their phones or tablets is surging. That 64 million figure is up 77% from last year. And daily users are up 88%. The growth is tied directly to smartphone adoption, which Comcore says is up 41%, almost 42% of phone owning audience, up 27% just a year ago. This stuff is huge, 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 all right? This is not some sort of trickling thing. What I want you to understand is this, that this is all being consumer-led. People are leading this. Business does not want this, all right? Business would wish you just sit back down at your TV and stop communicating already. It's driving them nuts because they have to keep up with this kind of stuff. 
Um, and they're doing, they are. I mean, they're, they are not slow to adopt this. They are, they are moving fast. Um, but it is not business that's coming up with this idea, all right? It is people, people buying smartphones, people hanging out on social media sites on their smartphones. It is, it is all people-led, and it is, it is increasingly speedy. I believe it is because we have been in a 60-year zombie-like slumber sitting in front of our TVs, mindlessly drooling as we take in the Jeffersons, uh, All in the Family, Gilligan's Island. Oh, jeez, can you believe I watched every episode of that? All of those? All of those. I've watched every episode of all of those sitcoms probably twice. Uh, Knight Rider, Dukes of Hazard. We just watched the worst junk for 60 years, and people are sick of it. Um, oh, darn it, censored. Ah, uh, thank you. You know, that's terrible because, okay, what's happening there? Thank you for the feed. Um, okay, uh, hold on. Links on, allow links to be shared. Hold on. I forgot to add this one little thing. Uh, wait, I can't do it there. I don't think. Oops, no, okay. I'm not being, I'm not, all right, hold on, hold on. Let me do something really quick. Okay, hold on. All right, now. Okay, uh, moderate off. Oh wait, moderate on, hold on. I pressed the wrong button. Hold on, I just have to log in here. Okay, oh, well, all right, I can't do it. All right, it's not letting me, all right, I'm sorry. The I messed it up. I messed up the links. Okay, allow. Okay, I know why, because I'm not logged in. Um, all right, uh, I, I can't do anything about it. I'm sorry about all those <laughs> terrible chat things. I, I'm not able to, I, I didn't set this up right, and so I can't send links there. Um, but, you know, you, 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 you get the idea, right? I mean, you know, these are the... the uh, things here but yeah i'm sorry the links aren't aren't w working right now and i'll just waste all your time if i have to go set it up because i me messed it up <laughs> before i started but i just want you to understand that this is all happening very quickly and people are i think tired of sitting mindlessly in front of their tv they we are social creatures all right humans have always been social creatures and we are finally getting back to our social roots using social media we're just doing it in a different way than we used to. But I believe that we are sick of just sitting isolated alone in front of our TV, and we are now using social media to connect um, in a way that we have not literally done in 60 years. All right. Um, okay, what else, what else? All right, let me pull this page up here. Um, let's see, ah, man, I, it's depressing. I don't want to talk about it, but there's, uh, they're uncovering all this terrible stuff about factories of Apple right now in China. Is it China? It's the Foxconn factory. Um, yeah, and just, I don't, yeah. You know, the problem is here, I don't really blame Apple. Um, a lot of people have terrible factories, Nike and so forth. Um, we want this stuff, you know, um, as consumers. We want our iPhones, right, and our iPads. And this, it, this was interesting. This article said, um, it says t it takes five days and 325 sets of hands to assemble an iPad, okay? So what that's saying is that, yeah, we only pay these people $1.78 an hour, but it takes 325 people or sets of hands and five days to put together an iPad. It's not just something that magically, magically gets punched out on a, um, you know, assembly line. It is human built. These are, these are handmade items. And for us to imagine that we can get a handmade item for, what is it, $300, that requires five days and 325 people is 
of course we only pay these people a dollar seventy eight an hour. It would cost us I mean imagine what it would cost us. We could nobody could afford them, you know? And so what we have to decide here as a society, as a global society, is, you know, um, are we cool with that? Um, I mean, you know, we get a sweet iPad, um, you know, for three hundred dollars, but you know, these people you only get a dollar seventy-eight and work in terrible conditions. But on the other hand, maybe it's better than what they had before. I don't know. This is terrible. These are terrible things. These are terrible conundrums. Um, I don't know the answer. Um, but you know, there you go. Oh, check this out. So um, hamburger meat could be grown in a test tube, and PETA is cool with it. PETA says, "Hey, if you can grow meat in a test tube." We're all for it. And I've got some vegetarian friends. I can't wait to ask them what they think of it. Would they start eating meat um, if uh, you could grow it in a test tube? I'm all for test tube meat as long as it's not terribly more expensive. And um, it's probably better for the environment because look at this. It says it, it requires about 100 pounds of resources to obtain 15 pounds of usable meat in the cattle industry. Can you believe that? A hundred pounds of resources to get 15 pounds of meat. Ridiculous. Artificial meat could improve the efficiency by at least 35%. So that could be better for our global world, right? Um, I'm not going to eat. I would rather eat no meat than to eat gross meat. You know, it still has to be delicious. I'm sorry. It has to be delicious. That's the number one priority. But I don't know. I guess the color is a little off. Um... It could also get less, you know, it might, you might have less E. coli and uh, foodborne illnesses, so that'd be good. But, uh, you know, I don't really care about the color. They, the color of the meat, it wavers between whitish pink and pinkish yellow. Is that what, it, no, I guess it's all red now, right? Red meat, right? So, I don't know. I'm not too into the color. I mean, they probably could dye it, right? Don't they dye tomatoes? I don't know. Anyways, fascinating world we live in, right? Um, mm, 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 mm. What did, here's a question for you, what did 181 million U.S. Internet users do in January? Any idea? Um, well, they watched online video, of course. <laughs> so, new data from Comscore Video Matrix shows that in 2012, January 2012, 181 million Internet users watched nearly 40 billion online videos. In January 2011, that number was 171 billion. So we're up like, what, 10 billion, or 10 million, I'm sorry, users. The winner was, of course, YouTube. They blew everyone else out of the pool with their 152 million unique views and 18.6 billion videos. Then uh, the next player, uh, the closest player was Vivo with 51 million viewers. It's the biggest partner channel, incidentally. Uh, with Warner Music and uh, Machinima. I don't know how you say that. Here's the wild part. The average person watched 22.6 hours of online video in January. Isn't that amazing? 22.6. This is up from only 14 hours year over year. Google has the highest individual effort with 7.5 hours. Um, and Hulu came in second with 3.2 hours. So it's it's prolific, man. People want this stuff. You need to also be considering what your video strategy is because this is where it all is heading. There is no, there, this is only just going to go up, you know. People love video. They love it. Love it. I love it. All right. So uh, let's see. Anything else particularly interesting? Oh, look at this. <laughs> you cannot sue a family member over unwanted Facebook photos, says a judge. Whether you look too young, too old, or too inebriated, we've all been there, tagged in unflattering Facebook photos. But if you're thinking of filing a lawsuit, think again. So Aaron Olson of uh, Chisago City, Minnesota. Let me make this a little bigger. Uh, figured this out the hard way on behalf of every Facebook user who has ever been embarrassed. Uh, they su so Olson sued his uncle for harassment. Olson requested his uncle remove the photo. Um, though Labrie removed the photo tags, he told Olson that if he didn't like the photos, he could stay off Facebook. Dang, man. That's your uncle. Whew. 
a wicked family. Judge Natalie Hudson ruled that to constitute harassment, words must have a substantial adverse effect on the safety, security, or privacy of another. Comments that are mean and disrespectful co coupled with innocuous family photos do not affect a person's safety, security, or privacy, and, certain, and certainly not substantially so. Translation, you are safe under U.S. law to embarrass your family members. <laughs> it's good to know, right? In fact, Labrie and Olsen are not even Facebook friends, suggesting there's more to this family drama than the real uh, lawsuit. Yeah, interesting, right? So um, it's good to know. You can tag people, and you are not going to get in trouble legally, at least according to that lawsuit. Pretty good, right? Um, uh, no, 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 no. I don't know. I think that's probably the biggest news of the, the week. I think, um, you know, we talk plenty about Pinterest um, and that side of the thing. But, uh, yeah, so that is the news that I wanted to report to you. Think about your Google Plus strategy. Think about your yeah, video strategy. We've got to have them. They're coming. And, again, it's not because you want to have them, okay? That's, that's, that's what um, the big mistake businesses make is that they're thinking, oh, well, I assume that my people aren't there. You know, my audience is not there. I think you're assuming wrong. 850 million users on Facebook, you know, hundreds of millions on Twitter. It goes on and on. This is a consumer-led uh, change. You, you go on, you, are, you uh, need to have a social media strategy because your customers want you to have one. So that's why we're doing it. That's why we're doing it. All right, everybody. It was fantastic to see you guys. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. I think we're going to get a little snow here in Ohio. I think I'm going to go tubing, snow tubing, that is. So um, that should be fun. Um, yeah, that's all I got. I got nothing else exciting. I hope you have a fantastic week. I will um, be right back here, same place, same channel, same station next week. All right, everybody, you take care. Have a fantastic week, fantastic weekend, and I will see you later. All right, bye, everybody. Take care now.